Want to go hybrid with your next car? How about a comfortable, spacious, tech-laden and quiet luxury hybrid SUV? Perfect for either businesses or families. Well, this is the Lexus RX and in today's review, I'm going to give you all the information that you need so you can decide if this is your perfect next car. So if you're in the market for a premium SUV, you are truly spoiled for choice. Popular offerings in this segment include the BMW X5, the Audi Q7 and the Volvo XC90, just to name a few. So this Lexus RX right here aims to stand out from its competitors with a keen focus on distinctive styling, both inside and out, a nicely upholstered interior with gorgeous build quality and perhaps most importantly for most drivers, a comfortable and refined driving experience. Unlike the majority of its rivals then, it's thankfully pretty easy to get your head around the RX lineup. There's just two models to choose from, so you have this regular five seat RX, that's the vehicle we're going to review for you today, plus the larger 7C RXL in case you need extra space. Uh, both models are equipped with the same engine, there's just one engine option, and they come with a choice of three different trim levels, the standard RX, the Sporty F Sport, and the refined Takumi. So without further ado, let's explore what makes this RX so special, and we'll start with that striking front end. So the design here is very familiar if you've seen a Lexus on the road before, but it's also quite distinctive and unique when compared to its rivals and it stands out on UK roads. Um, I'm quite a big fan of Lexus's spindle grills. Love how it just flows down the front of the car and I love how the badging here is just housed in the middle, displayed rather prominently. It lets you know that this is a luxury car. So LED headlights come as standard regardless of which model you go for, always great to see. Um, if you just opt for the standard RX and RXL, you also get the auto high beam system. So that's particularly handy uh, for nighttime driving. If you upgrade to the F Sport or Takumi trims, those are the top spec trim levels, uh, you get the Blade Scan Adaptive High beam system. Essentially what this is, it's an auto dimming system and it's able to identify pedestrians and road signs from a greater distance and um, it just gives you greater nighttime visibility. So if you're somebody who gets anxious about driving um, you know at night in those cold winter months then I do recommend upgrading to those higher spec trims to just ease that somewhat. Other highlights of the front end then include LED daytime running lights and fog lights that come as standard. I love how the design here just flows inwards towards the side vents, gives the car quite a lot of personality and I'm a massive fan of the steel material that just wraps around that grey grille. Really nice stuff. I'm a massive fan of the front end but let me know what you make of it in the comments below. The side profile then is really sleek. I love the sharp lines just flowing down the length of the car. Makes for a very really clean and uncluttered appearance. Let's focus on these door mirrors then. So they've been designed to reduce wind noise as much as possible. Um, they're heated as well, so really nice for those cold winter months. Uh, they tilt downwards when you reverse, so it's very easy to see the curb and maneuver out of tight parking spaces. And if you opt for one of the uh, higher spec trim levels, they will be auto dimming and that reduces you uh, the chances of being dazed by other road users. So a lot of thought and care has been taken into the mirrors. Let's check out these alloy wheels then. So these are gorgeous 20 inch 10 twin spoke alloys in a nice chrome finish. You get these with the Takumi trim level. That's the one we've configured with this vehicle right here. Look really, really nice. As standard, these will be still be 20 inches, though these are five twin spoke uh, wheels in a nice dark grey finish still look very very lovely indeed. You can also configure the car with optional 18 inch silver wheels and they're designed to provide optimal driving balance though having said that I haven't had any issues with these 20 inch wheels here and they actually reduce the impact of more aggressive humps and bumps as you're driving along so that is something to consider. 
I'm just going to shimmy over here and we can check out the hybrid badging to remind you that this is a self-charging hybrid vehicle. I'll tell you more about the powertrain when we move on to that section a bit later on in the video. So the door handles will be in whatever body colour you've chosen. We've opted for deep blue. That is a metallic option. It will set you back around £670. On screen now are the other metallic options uh, plus the special metallic colours that will set you back around £920 quid so you'll have to weigh up whether it's worth uh, spending nearly a grand on just the color of this vehicle but I'll leave that up to you. If you don't want to pay any extra just go for velvet black it's a standard color and it looks really good. As we make our way to the rear end you'll spot the rear privacy glass to stop people from peering in. Uh, roof rails come as standard as well and just behind the roof rails I can't quite see because I'm too small but we have a panoramic sunroof and you get that with the top spec Takumi trim level. Uh, so the fuel cap is pretty rigid it's not too flimsy it's not going to fall off which is always great to see okay let's head to the back now so you get a rear spoiler to give the impression that the car is sporty which it most certainly is not i do love the design of these rear led light clusters i love how angular they are and how they flow into this steel material here really really nicely designed at the same time you know this is a very clean looking rear end but it's also angular and it's not too overcomplicated, which I really do appreciate. Right then, how much space is there in the back of the RX 450H? Well, let's find out. We'll pop the boot open and we don't actually have to do much because it's a power operated tailgate. So it takes a little bit of time to open up, but it will get there eventually. So we have 453 litres of space to work with here, which it's okay, it's not great. Uh, Lexus has definitely prioritised interior passenger space over uh, boot space here. And then you've got rivals like the BMW X5 that offer a whopping 650 litres of space. So by comparison, it's a little bit disappointing. Though this is enough room to fit six of these small uh, carry-on luggage. And there's hardly any kind of lip here, so it's really easy to load awkwardly sized items into the back. Alternatively, you can fit two large suitcases instead. While this is not as cavernous as other luxury SUV offerings, uh, there should be more than enough space for the weekly grocery shop or small family holiday up the country. If you do need to maximise luggage capacity as much as possible, you can do by folding down those rear seats in a 60-40 arrangement and you don't even need to awkwardly lean over to pull a lever or head over to the passenger side and pull something there. You can just lean here, on the right hand side there's buttons and you just hold them down and the seats fold down electronically. I absolutely love this feature and it comes as standard across the RX range. So this will give you around 1,924 litres in total to play with and that's enough room for one adult bike and you don't even have to remove the wheels. What are some of the other highlights then? Well, the parcel shelf can extend outwards like so. You just attach it there. Um, you could put some objects up here but it's a bit flimsy so they might roll around while you're on the move. Alternatively, you might want to attach those to one of the hooks dotted around the uh, boot space here. So there's one just here, uh, there's a couple towards the back, just dotted around the place really. Um, underfloor storage is okay. If you haven't got a spare wheel, there'd be a little bit of space to work with though. We've got a wheel just taking up all that space. So this is what the rear bench looks like when it's folded down completely flat. Um, as you'll notice, there's a little bit of a lip in the floor here, and that makes it quite awkward to load objects like long bits of wood that you're taking to the tip or picking up from B&Q or like ski, something like that. I would like this section to be completely flat, but hey, it's just a minor criticism of mine. A fantastic feature then is that you can slide this bench forwards and backwards and that's fantastic. So if you've got a rear passenger who's willing to sacrifice a bit of legroom so you can increase the size of your boot, then that is an option. And it's fantastic that the RX offers such an excellent level of practicality in this regard. So guys, are you impressed by the RX 450H so far? Then let me know what you make of it in the comments below. If you'd like to find out more at this stage, perhaps you have some questions that need answers and you'd like to explore your options to find your perfect specification, then you can do by giving OSV's vehicle specialists a call on 01903 538 835 or you can just click that pop-up banner up there to book a date or time to chat that best works for you. Okay guys, 
I think it's about time we got behind the wheel of the RX 450H. So here we are then, we're behind the wheel of the RX 450H and my first impressions are, well, quite unsurprisingly, it's incredibly comfortable, smooth and relaxing to drive. The seats hold you in place nicely around the corners and the steering is nice and light uh, for a vehicle of this size. I quite like light steering, um, but it works well with this car. Um, it just makes it very convenient um, and an easy, most importantly, to get from A to B. So the accelerator pedal is quite soft um, and it's responsive as well, which is great. Um, it doesn't take too long to get used to. You only have to lift your foot up just slightly for the car to slow down. So it's nice and responsive. The brake pedal is also quite firm. Um, you'll notice when you come to a junction or a roundabout, you need to make a complete stop. Um, there's no issue at all, really. You don't have to start braking too early. Um, it's pretty responsive in that regard. So what's the tech like while you're on the move? So we've configured this car with the head-up display, really handy, so that projects your speed and the speed limit of the area directly in front of you, so you don't need to glance down at that driver display. I, I just absolutely love this, and to be honest, I would configure it in um, the majority of vehicles if this was an option. I think it's pretty essential these days. Um, just below that then, behind the steering wheel, we have the driver display. Uh, there's quite a lot of information here, so you've got a tiny little display in between the speedometers, um, and that shows how efficient you're being on your journey. Um, also shows uh, like how the temperature outside, you know, the time, basic stuff like that. But it's nice that you can cycle between uh, lots of key information, and it's quite easy to just glance down and view that. And then we have the infotainment setup. Um, I like how high up this is on the dashboard. It's really um, easy to just glance over, um, see what you need to see, and then glance back at the road. I would like it to be angled slightly more towards the driver, that's my biggest complaint about it. Um, but other than that, yeah, I like where uh, Lexus have positioned it in this particular vehicle. Okay guys, let's head into the OSV office, where I'll tell you more about the RX's trim levels. Let's start with the basic RX then. This starts from £53,865 and for this price tag you get quite a lot of standard equipment to be fair. These include 20 inch alloy wheels. Uh, you get a host of uh, safety features as well courtesy of the Lexus Safety System Pack. Uh, this includes road sign assist, adaptive high beam, uh, cruise control, lane keep assist, all the stuff you would expect in a modern vehicle. Inside the cabin you get that 12.3 inch Lexus navigation display which we absolutely love. Uh, you get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as well so there's no discrimination there um, depending on what phone you've gone for. You also get intelligent front and rear parking sensors so if you're not used to a vehicle of these size these will be especially handy at first when trying to maneuver into and out of tight parking spaces. Uh, you get electrically adjustable eight-way uh, adjustability for the front driver's seat and also the front passenger seat as well so they can play around with their configuration uh, to find the most comfortable position for them. And you also get an electric tailgate, so that's especially handy when you come back from the shops, your arms are full with bags and you really just want to lob those bits in the boot, you can do and you won't have to drop anything to get the boot open. So another great practicality feature with the RX. Next up the ladder we have RX Premium. This starts from £55,515 and if you really want to maximise as much as you possibly can out of that basic RX specification then you do need to go for this. Uh, this adds two-way lumbar support for the driver's seat so another additional uh, comfort feature there as well as smart keyless entry so you just have to walk near the car if the key's in your pocket it's going to open for you so yeah just another bit of practicality there. In the middle we have the premium sport edition and this starts from £57,165. The wheels are still 20 inches but they have a black sputtering effect to suit that black exterior styling which affects the front grille and the 
the mirrors as well. Oh, the whole overall package looks really, really nice. If you like what Audi does with its Black Edition models, then you'll really like what Lexus has done here with the RX. Uh, in addition, you get heated outer rear seats, so your rear passengers should not be moaning at all while on the move. You also get smooth leather upholstery inside the cabin, as well as a head-up display with this trim. You know I really like that feature. It displays all the information that you need uh, right onto the road ahead, so that's really, really handy. And you get a panoramic sunroof, letting lots of light into the cabin on that one day of summer we have in the UK. So yeah, really impressive equipment with this mid-range trim. If you're all about that sporty lifestyle, you have to go for the F Sport trim level. That starts from 58,015 pounds. Uh, the 20 inch alloy wheels are outfitted with F Sport styling, as has the overall exterior. You'll notice F Sport badging dotted around the place, as well as that black spindle grille, which looks really good, as well as metallic front bumpers, um, creating a really nice overall look there. You get the additional Sport Plus mode, um, so you get five driving modes to play with now, plus adaptive variable suspension to adapt to whatever kind of terrain you're driving on and really maximize that driving experience for you, plus you get ventilated front seats inside the cabin. Last up we have Takumi, that's the particular configuration we've been test driving in this video. It starts from £64,515 and it really maximizes the overall package on offer here. Um, it's £10,000 more than that base spec, so you will have to decide whether the extra equipment on offer here is worth the premium. So you get that 15 speaker Mark Levinson surround sound system, so audio files, you'll absolutely love that. The alloy wheels are still 20 inches, but they're in a gorgeous Takumi design. Uh, you get extra safety features like blind spot monitoring as well as uh, rear cross traffic alert. So if you're particularly anxious about driving a vehicle of this size, that should eliminate some of the anxiety for you. You also get a 360 degree panoramic view monitor, which I've had great fun playing around with, as well as four way power adjustability for the lumbar support. So yeah, you really get the most out of the RX with the Takumi pack, but yeah, is it worth an extra 10,000 pounds? I'll let you decide that one. Okay, let's head back into the RX and I'll tell you more about the driving experience. Tom, what is the ride height like? So you do sit quite high up in this car, which is fantastic. Visibility um, of the road ahead and what's around you is brilliant. So the windscreen is nice and wide. The pillars are not too wide either. So uh, you've got good visibility to the left and right hand side. And the door mirrors are quite frankly humongous. You can see miles back behind you, which is great. Uh, the view outside the uh, rear window isn't too bad either. It's obviously not as bad as you'd find in a coupe SUV. Um, and it yeah, just does the job really. So are the climate controls easy to use while on the move? And I'm pleased to say, yes, they are, because they are all physical buttons. Really easy to touch and play with those uh, while traveling from A to B. You can also uh, change them through the infotainment screen if you so wish. Right, let's take a closer look at this interior then. So it's absolutely gorgeous for a start. We've um, opted for the rich cream semi aniline leather and this is complemented by wood inlays dotted around the cabin. You get these with the top spec Takumi pack and wow, just look at how gorgeous this is. And I love how the wood inlays are used sparingly. It's quite minimal and you know, there's not too much of it. So it means when it is used, it stands out. So you have it on the steering wheel here um, and it just slides into the leather. Um, it's on the side of the doors as well. And it's just down here in the center console. So yeah, that's it really used quite sparingly and it's a really effective use of that material. There's loads of different interior options, guys. So if you'd like to find out more, find the one that suits you perfectly, then make sure to get in touch with one of our vehicle specialists. Let's turn our attention to the steering wheel then. So I've told you about the wood inlays uh, that come with the Takumi pack. Um, there's the media controls on the left-hand side, cruise controls on the right-hand side, and you've got paddle shifters at the back here so you can do manual shifts should you so wish. Just behind the steering wheel then is the driver's display. I'll just boot up the car to show you. Uh, just shows you all the key information that you need while going from A to B really. So on the right hand side, you've got your speedometer. On the left, it shows you how much charge is left in that self-charging hybrid battery. And in the middle is a tiny 4.2 inch media screen. And you can toggle between the different options there by pressing a button on the right hand side of the wheel. So I just have it show how uh, fuel efficient I'm being on my current journey. Uh, you can cycle between these, so you can have a compass on there. Uh, you can show what uh, radio station or album or podcast that you're listening to and other bits and bobs as well. So it's nice to have all that information right where you need it, really. 
Let's turn our attention to the infotainment display then. So this is a 12.3 inch media touchscreen and it comes with Lexus navigation and Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as standard, which is great to see. So if you get fed up with Lexus's software implementation, then you can always mirror your smartphone apps onto that display, which is good. Um, overall, I'm kind of a fan of the Lexus this setup here. It's a bit fiddly uh, to type into a, an address using the touchpad down here, especially on the move. Um, but it is good that you can also just use it as a touch screen if you want to. So there's multiple ways to navigate um, around it. As I said, while I was on the move a bit earlier, I would like the screen to just be angled slightly more towards the driver. It's a minor nitpick um, as it does sit quite high, which is nice. So you can just glance over and get a good look at the screen and then go back and focus your attention on the road ahead. Just above the screen then is an auto dimming rear view mirror. So that prevents you from being dazed from cars behind you. That's great to see. Uh, just below that then, let's focus our attention on this center console-y bit. Love the implementation of the Lexus analog clock in the middle there, just between the air vents. Really, really nice. Gives the cabin more of a premium feel, in my opinion. I love the climate control. It's dual zone. Uh, the air vents are pretty wide as well. And it's worked really well. It's been a particularly cold day today. My hands are freezing. And I don't want to put a coat on because I've committed to a shirt. So the uh, climate control has helped prevent me from going into a hyperthermic state. So thank you, Lexus, for that. Just below that, then, we've got the 15 uh, speaker Mark Levinson premium sound system, as you would expect. It sounds fantastic. And you can configure this with the Takumi pack or it comes as standard with the Takumi trim. In this center compartment area, we have a 12 volt socket for charging a laptop, tablet, something like that. Uh, there's a couple of USB ports next to that as well. And the wireless smartphone charging pad comes as standard. Fantastic to see. You rarely see that as a standard feature in a lot of new vehicles. So yeah, really great addition to the RX. Just behind that then are the controls for the heated and ventilated seats. But they're a bit hidden away, especially while you're on the move. You have to glance down to look at them and they're just hiding behind that gear selector. So not sure why they're there. They could be moved elsewhere, um, but at least we have heated and ventilated seats with this particular configuration anyway. There's a storagey bit here, which is perfect for your keys, but it goes down weirdly far. I wasn't expecting it to go down that far. You can pretty much shove anything in there, really. Next to it are a couple of cup holders. These are adjustable, so you can fit like plastic bottles, cans, cups, anything really will be able to fit comfortably inside those cup holders. And here is the touchpad for the infotainment display. And there's nice shortcuts to the map and menu. Nice bit of haptic feedback as well while you're scrolling your finger across. And yeah, I like the imp implementation of this. And down here, we have the toggle for the driving mode selector. Um, I wish it was up here though. You find it up here in the Lexus UX300e and the LC500 convertible. It's just easier to toggle while you're on the go, but it's down here, but that's not too much of a problem. As standard, you get four different driving modes. These are Eco, EV, uh, Normal and Sport. F Sport and Takumi trimmed models and Sport S. Uh, the sportier driving modes get adaptive variable uh, suspension, which either sharpens or softens the ride uh, depending on your driving style. It also improves engine responsiveness, makes the engine a whole lot louder as well, and it adds a bit of weight to the steering. Um, I recommend keeping the car in eco for a lot of your time though. The performance won't be ex particularly exciting. You'll be maximizing fuel efficiency as much as possible if that is important to you. And then when you get to a junction and you want to get off the block quickly, stick it into sport and you'll have no problems at all doing that. Um, you can also do short journeys around town using that 288 volt uh, battery pack. When you stick it into EV mode though, it isn't going to last long. It does deplete quickly, but it's nice to have the option of doing an all electric journey if you want to. Last few storage bits then. So you get a nice spacious center compartment area. Just pop that open. Goes down really deep actually. You can fit lots of sweeties in there. There's a couple of USB ports, an AUX port, and another 12 volt socket as well. Really nice. All your charging needs are very well covered by the RX, that's for sure. Let's open up the glove box. Really spacious. Look how much stuff you can fit in there. Very, very nice. Perhaps my highlight of the storage, or perhaps even the whole interior, I'm not even joking, are these fold out door bins. Oh, 
brilliant idea. It's just so simple as well. You can fit like a 500 mil bottle in there, a flask, you name it. It's gonna comfortably fit in the side of the door there. I promised I would talk about it, so let's do that now. You get the panoramic sunroof with Takumi trimmed models. It stretches about three quarters of the way across the roof lining, although the roof itself only retracts about the length of the uh, front passenger side, which is a little bit disappointing, but it's really easy to do while you're on the move. The buttons are up here just above the uh, rear view mirror. Hold it down for one second and it will retract for you and let lots of light into the cabin, which is fantastic because it is a cabin that benefits from being brightened. Let's finally talk about the seats then. As you would expect, they are exceptionally comfortable for long journeys and there's a great amount of adjustability to be had as well. So you can put it up pretty highly and you can put yourself down quite low as well. You can pretty much fully recline, which is really handy if you want to stop off at a motorway service stop and get some shut eye. And one thing I do want to point out before we leave the front here are the sun visors, which are wrapped in really nice and soft squidgy material. Great stuff indeed. Right, that's about it for the front. Let's see if the back is just as impressive. Here we are then, this is the back of the RX and oh, so comfy. It's just like sitting in your lounge chair. So passengers over six foot tall are not gonna have any issues with headroom whatsoever. I've got lots of space to work with, as you can see up there. Headroom is equally as generous. I can stretch my legs out all the way, which is always great to see. And there's a nice bit of um, soft touch materials just below that driver's seat there. And that just cosets your feet in place. Really, really nice. Uh, the uh, door pocket is really spacious as well. Lots of space for a tablet or magazine, something like that. Here's another example of the wood inlays and lever effect on the door. Really, really nice, complementing that steel door handle. Love the effect of that. Um, you get a nice sort of retractable uh, privacy shutter, which you can put all the way up there if you want to stop people peering in, or if you've got kids in the back who want to get some shut eye after a long day at a theme park or something like that. Really easy to adjust that. Just down here, we have a couple of air vents, though you will be at the mercy of one of the front passengers. Um, Takumi trend models get heated rear seats. That's fantastic to see. And there's a couple of USB ports at the bottom as well for charging your phone. If there isn't a middle passenger, you can fold this bit out, open this up, and there's a nice storage area in there to put sweets or whatever you want to do. And you press this button here to fold out the cup holders rather extravagantly. Not as big a fan of the design of these ones as I am for the uh, front cup holders, but they will hold your drinks in place and stop them from uh, sloshing around while on the move. What's it like in the middle then? Well, let's slide over and it's not actually too bad to be honest. It is sticking into my back a little bit just because those cup holders are made of plastic, of course. Um, there's no elevated bit in the floor here, which is nice. It sits nice and flat. Um, of course, you get Isofix fittings on um, either side of the rear passenger seats and yeah, that's pretty much it for the rear space, guys. I'm really impressed. If this is a car you can see yourself driving, you can see your family and friends absolutely loving this interior, then do make sure to get in touch with one of OSV's vehicle specialists on 01903 538 835 or click that pop-out banner above to book a consultation at a time that works for you. We'd be more than happy to answer your questions, address your concerns and provide you with any info you need to get you behind the wheel of a brand new RX. Right, okay guys, let's hop out and I'll tell you about that single engine on offer. So there's only one powertrain option available, which keeps things simple. That's what we like to see. Um, let's pop open that bonnet so we can take a look at the engine on offer. There's just a lever um, just under the steering wheel on the driver's side. And there's a lever here that you just need to flick over to the left and it will fly open for you. There we go. So this is a 3.5 litre hybrid engine and it's paired with an eCVT automatic gearbox that sends power to all four wheels via two electric motors. This powertrain setup produces around 308 brake horsepower and achieves a 0 to 62 miles per hour time of around 7 0.7 seconds, which sounds pretty quick, but unfortunately this car is quite sluggish off the block, especially in the eco mode, and that is due to just poor throttle performance and also that ECVT 
transmission, um, which unlike a conventional gearbox with the mechanical setup, it doesn't change through the gear seamlessly. It just switch, switches between uh, different gear ratios. So this adds to that really smooth and relaxing driving experience, but it doesn't mean that it's particularly exhilarating. I'm a little bit disappointed by the fuel efficiency and CO2 emissions though, considering the hybrid nature of this vehicle. So it quotes around 35 to 36 miles per gallon on the combined cycle, which isn't great. You will be making regular fuel stops as a result. And CO2 can be as high as up to 180 grams per kilometer. And that puts it in one of the top benefit in kind tax brackets. So this isn't the best option for a company car, um, though you do have other Lexus models like the UX 300E, which is all electric, and it's very much in that 1% BIK tax bracket, so you can afford or take advantage of all those amazing savings there. So the question remains then, should you buy, lease, or finance a Lexus RX 450H? Well, if you are looking for a luxury hybrid SUV, then I think you should, and that's due to a number of different reasons. So the cabin, oh, it's just fantastic. It's very well designed, full of high quality materials, advanced technology, and it's comfortable uh, for five adult passengers, even for long journeys as well. You can also take advantage of Lexus's incredible reliability record. Even if this car does break down, you'll be safe in the knowledge that you'll be on the road again very quickly. And Lexus is just one of the most reliable brands out there at the moment. Uh, the car is also very smooth and relaxing to drive. And if you're somebody who favors that over performance, then this is the model for you. And I just absolutely love the design. It's very clean and very sleek. It's not too over complicated. It's very well thought out. What are some of the downsides of the RX then? Well, performance could definitely be more exciting. As a result, BMW and Audi rivals are more fun to drive. There's no diesel option available as well, unfortunately. And that means drivers who like to take advantage of the most fuel efficient engine option can't do so because there's only one engine option. Um, a number of drivers may also be disappointed by the boot space that pales in comparison uh, with some of this vehicle's rivals. Though in my view, that sliding rear bench more than makes up for it and really it's gonna be suitable for most people's daily needs. The biggest downside for me though are the poor levels of CO2, considering that this is a hybrid vehicle. I really do hope Lexus improve upon this in the next generation model. But all in all, I've absolutely loved my time with the RX 450H. If this is a car that you can see yourself driving and you'd like to get the ball rolling on delivery, then make sure to get in touch with OSV's vehicle specialists on 01903. 538-835 or you can click the pop-up banner up there to book a free consultation or the link down below in the description. So many ways to get in touch with our team of experts. Thanks so much for watching this in-depth review guys. If you enjoyed it please do give the video a thumbs up that really helps our channel out. Also subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and then make sure to click the notification bell up there to get notified when new videos go live. That's all from me today guys. Many thanks for watching. Take care and safe driving.